So, so unlike a, a typical toric calculation where you're going to enter in your information uh, via uh, the, the uh, you know over the over the internet, let's say an AMO calculator, which is what we wind up using for the overwhelming majority of our lenses. Um, we also like to use the Callisto system, which we found through a study which will soon to be published, uh, that the biometry through the Callisto system is actually more accurate than if we were to run intraoperative aberometry. And so with this system, and it's right over here, you'll find that it's all done through uh, a, the USB. We are then able to calculate this through the biometric data. We find our patient here. We then plug in her information and it's as easy as punching a few uh, data points. You kind of, you find the patient, everything is gonna be referenced. It'll wirelessly connect through the patient. And as you can see, they're lining things up and we're probably gonna give a pause here in just a second. But if we were to say back up once again to the patient, we can kind of come back through this stuff and, uh, and, and, and kind of look at all of her data once more and look at her data. You'll see that we have a, a right eye and you can look at it, left eye data, and then you also have their imaging throughout. It's all neatly lined. And the Iowa Master 700 with the swept source OCT is just astonishing. You get corneal thickness, imaging of the iris, lens thickness. You actually get fulvial contours a really uh, high resolution infrared image of the iris pupil um, and obviously you get a, a reflection here coming off of the the corneal surface it, it's it's a really a device that that it, I, I think is unparalleled um, in giving the biometric data and you know obviously right left eye all the things that you would want moving forward with regard to surgery with maybe the exception of a wavefront profile but once again this is in a static state. Looking at uh, a steep axis is particularly helpful. Now, in this particular case, we're going to be treating the left eye. And after thorough conversation with our patient, she's elected to move forward with a toric IOL in her left eye. Uh, and our goal will be to consider uh, a monovision setup. So we are looking for a, a low myopic correction here to assist with her reading capability. And so we're going to go ahead and get started here. And you'll see the actual device in action. registration if you would an automatic registration and you'll see that that is actually registering based on landmarks that it is seeing and then go ahead and fire forward thank you and we can go ahead and overlay if you would hit live surgery then okay got it now you got it perfect yep and so I'm recording perfect so what you're seeing on that screen is exactly what I'm seeing and so we have the opportunity to completely overlay. Now, earlier I said all the great stuff that we can do here. Now, by stuff, what I mean is it's not just a matter of lining up a toric IOL. What we can also do is consider factors. And I think my good friend Daniel Chang kind of said it best. You can kind of consider things like the coaxial light reflex. So angle cap is going to be important. Um, lining up the the rexus is also going to be important. We're, it's going to allow us to kind of make our caps the rexus. I like to do a kind of a bimanual approach, and it gives me a sense of kind of confidence to be able to maintain and fixate the globe. It's particularly helpful when you have young training physicians in place, kind of observing. I think it'd be particularly helpful. I know it would have been when I was still training or early in my career to have a tool such as this um, and it still is you can see how just how user friendly it is and once again from a from the standpoint of incorporating information you're taking the data from the IOL master which is certainly the leader in the field with regard to preoperative biometric data and that's where we know we're going to be placing our toric IOL. So a little bit of champagne before the case. We can all feel pretty good about 
the rexus, but we don't want to celebrate too soon. So we're going to remove our toric overlay, get prepared. Now once again, as we get ready to remove our cataract and set things up, we're going to use the Stellaris PC. One of the other things that I think is crucial is we would sit there and prepare ourselves with intraoperative aberrometry to get some final information off the, the intraoperative aberrometer. We no longer feel the need to do that since we have our Callisto data per se for the overwhelming majority of our toric patients because of our confidence uh, with regard to the Callisto system. So it does provide a, an extra measure of efficiency, which as you can see, as we tend to do majority of our day out of a single room and 30 cases out of a single room can make for a long day. And so every bit counts. Once again, ordinarily we would be going to our intraoperative aberrometer at this point, and we don't have to do that anymore. and we'd spend probably a good minute and a half reinflating the eye under OVD. Uh, and with our recent data, which we hope to have in the literature soon, um, kind of highlighting the benefits of this biometric information, we're not gonna have to do that. And so the only other thing I would throw at everybody is emphasize the importance of uh, lining the marks on a toric lens in parallel. Don't try and get it within the air bars. So take a Sinsky hook. Mm -hmm. Try and line them up on one of the lenses here, or one of the, the lines here, not within the, the three lines, actually on one of them. And it can be done with the soft tip here of the IA, or with the second instrument. So I usually like to just have my Sinsky hook in my other hand. This can be done by manually as well. Make sure you remove all of the OVD. The beauty of uh, the Stellaris, once again, is that we can go ahead, is that it does it so gently, but it really is so forgiving that, uh, you know, it it's winds up being just an extension of the FACO machine and of your, um, of your IOL master, the Callisto, that is. So the integration is, is phenomenal a lot less thinking goes into this. It's not necessarily a new skill to integrate all of this technology. So once again, line everything up. Make sure kind of you're comfortable with your orientation. And once again, this was a markerless registration. You can see some faint marks that I placed there in the event that we were to somehow lose registration. Those were placed with the robo marker and infrared. So a little trick here is because you have coaxial light, I'll turn down one of the lights and I'll ask our good patient here to look at the upper light or the lower light. And so because our hash mark is towards the upper light, I'll, I'll ask her, please look at the upper light there, my dear. And you can see her line of sight is perfect. Spot on. So are my... Uh, torque markers. You don't get much better than that. And we'll end with a little dessert, the post-operative antibiotic. And we're all happy there. Thank you.